Welcome to Let's Do 2020, the only talk show to come out of Corona that's encouraging more votes and more votes. Get your Goats 2020 calendar now at the link below. This week, New York canceled its presidential primary, denying more than 6.2 million people the option needed to vote. The impact this will have on down ballot races is real. Turnout is expected to be super low, just like if Beyonce pulled out of Coachella last minute. In other news, Hillary crawled out of her hole to come and endorse Joe Biden for president. She also saw her shadow, which means we're going to have at least six more months of fundraising emails. And now for our main story this week, which involves neither Democrats nor Republicans. That's right, it's third party week. Voting can often feel like a choice between Bill Pullman and Bill Paxton, even if there are lots of third party options out there in America. So our intrepid team of investigative reporters at Let's Do 2020 have put together this list of little known facts about third party platforms. First is one you may have heard of, the Green Party. The meetings always run long because they can't stop talking about being vegan. They recycle their ballots and their mascot is a turtle with a straw through its nose. Democratic Socialists. They print AOC on all of their money and they're in favor of Medicare and Bernie Sanders 2012 stickers for all. The US Marijuana Party. Everyone falls asleep halfway through the convention, but at least they have great snacks. Then there's the Peace and Freedom Party, the only group who smokes more weed than the US Marijuana Party. The Rent is Too Damn High Party. Oh, there's no joke here. We just really wish this guy would move to California. And finally, the United States Pirate Party. They hold all their meetings and abandon Long John Silvers. They upload all their speeches onto Napster, still, and they're in favor of the death penalty, but only if it's by walking their plank. Their meetings also go really long because they like to argue. Why are we talking to third parties? Well, just this week, independent congressman from Michigan, Justin Amash, announced that he's exploring a run for president on the libertarian ticket. No, the other libertarian ticket. No, the other libertarian ticket. If you're not familiar, libertarians are currently known for standing outside city hall with signs saying, I want a haircut. They hate government control, but fail to see the irony in running campaigns to be in charge of the government. For more on why Amash is running for president, we go live to an interview with his campaign manager, Roxanne Gordon. Ha, <laughs> sup Vega, what's good? Sorry, you're just not what I expected a campaign manager for a serious third party candidate to look like. No, dude, I get it. But seriously, trust me. You know, I spend my days playing Red Dead Redemption online and arguing about property tax on Reddit. So I've told my fair share of Justin's what to do in my day. So Roxanne, why is Justin Amash running for president? <laughs> because he has the freedom to. Just because you can do something doesn't mean you should do it, like getting a lip tattoo. How does Congressman Amash square his libertarian values with running the entire federal government? Libertarians believe in personal freedom and personal responsibility. So like, instead of a commander in chief, we have a, that's on you bro, in chief, you know? Individuals are going to have freedom and power like they have never had before. Yes, yes, yeah, eat it like your mom's meatloaf, noob. <laughs> Are you playing video games right now? What? Yeah, COD. But yeah, so anyway, like listen, imagine this. Instead of Trump picking fights with journalists during press conferences or, you know, attacking respected elective officials, we have a president who hit him with a, you do you, bro. <laughs> I mean, like... I am running Justin's campaign out of my parents' garage in Scottsdale, Arizona. So obviously, I believe that Americans deserve a humble leader who treats everybody equally. Well, Roxanne, that's all we have time for today. Thanks for being with us and good luck on the campaign trail. You can find arguments on both sides of the internet arguing whether Amash is hurting or helping Biden or Trump. Some say he'll siphon votes away from Democrats, creating a Jill Stein or Ralph Nader effect that will leave us all feeling a little green. Or perhaps it'll be more like Texas Independent Ross Perot, who peeled away votes from HW like a bowler hat off a talking dog, clearing the way for Bill Clinton to the White House. But as there aren't huge numbers of Republicans chomping at the bit to vote for Joe, our guess is that it might actually help him. And then that turns out to be the case, Democrats will be as happy as Arnold Schwarzenegger's little donkey on her first birthday. That's all we have time for today. I'm gonna go ride my own tiny donkey around the neighborhood. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next week.
Yeah.